Hello, everyone. First of all, I want to urge everyone in this room to imagine three backpacks. The first backpack, made out of leather from the most well-known designer with your initials monogrammed on it. Then, the second backpack, made out of a strong cloth with a padded back and one occasional small tear. Now, I believe the second backpack is not as aesthetically pleasing as the first one, but it still gets the job done. Now, the third backpack, old and torn, barely fitting any books. In the happy case, its possessor actually has books. Now, what is this? Why am I talking about backpacks? Well, the backpacks represent your cultural capital. Your cultural backpack, if you may call it that. The one you bring from your home to school and carry it everywhere with you. It is not just your family. It is the whole accumulation of knowledge around you. From the sports your parents took you to when you were a child, to the type of birthday cake or party you have been used to, to the fact that Christmas is strictly family time, and of course, the discussions during dinner you hear about politics classed as adult talk. All of these things, all of them are different and all of them go into your cultural backpack. Now, not only is the backpack physically different, but what it carries within it, metaphorically. It carries your dreams and aspirations, your parents' dreams for you, the job they always wanted you to do since you were little, and the books your parents read or didn't read to you when you were a child. And it doesn't only carry your dreams. It carries your parents' aspirations for, for you, their opinions, the way they value education, and their belief of success in life. And here is my backpack. And here is my backpack all throughout the years. I was cute. It's still red, just gotten bigger and grosser from all of the careless daily use. It carries heavy GCSE notebooks and they are full of scribbles. But it also carries my dreams, my passions. It carries my grandma's efforts to teach me to be kinder my father's pressure to be better at physics and maths, my mother's pretentious ambitions for my future, and of course, my anxieties before speaking in a public space like this. My school, my teachers, my friends, all of this, they shape me into who I am. Now, I have to confess something, and I want to be very honest with you. There might be a probability, a small one, but nevertheless a probability that I am talking about this because my biggest passion as a 16-year-old is education. Or might it be that hearing about education is what I've been used to my whole life? My mom is a university teacher specializing in educational sciences. She says she has been breathing and eating education since she was my age. I actually knew what equity means before learning how to spell the word. I might have to admit that I stole this subject from one of her books she accidentally left on a table on which I spilled milk. This is part of my cultural backpack and subconsciously has affected me greatly. This happens because families play a very important role in their children's education. Your parents are your first teachers. Your house is your first classroom. <sighs> education is not intermittent. It is happening all the time. From the first time you're taught how to use cutlery or use your hands to eat, to all of your life. It might be happening right now while you are listening to our speeches, I hope. I might be flattering myself. An opinion might be made 
because a child finds whatever their parents say perfect and always correct. Another opinion might be made because a teenager just desperately wants to disagree with their family for whatever reason. Now, for me to actually talk about this specific subject, I had to listen to my mom and actually take her advice, which was a tremendously hard thing for a teenager to do. Now, I would like to get technical with more information from the library we have in our home. I have read that statistically, the more elevated the student's socioeconomic status is, the better the student's results are. A recent team's large-scale assessment where pupils have been tested at both sciences and mathematics proved that students with high socioeconomic backgrounds tend to have higher academic achievement than students from lower backgrounds. Several other studies have shown that the likelihood of attending college right after high school uh, graduation is substantially tied to home income. I can explain this with my own example. Let's imagine school as a race you have to run wherever and whoever you are in the world. You have had a good night's sleep, been driven to your race by your supportive family, and the weather is just perfect. On the other side of the world, another child has to run the same race. Still, the weather was just horrible and they had to walk by themselves. This is inequity in education. It was standardized. You both had to run the same distance. Still, they're metaphorically competing against you. And I want you to think about this. Is it actually fair? I don't know how good my backpack is, but I certainly consider myself lucky. I have my own room, good running shoes. The dog I always wanted, wonderful and supportive teachers who challenge and motivate me every day, all of the materials I need for my learning. And of course, a spare box of almond milk in case I spill the other one. Because I feel so lucky, I also want to spill information from my backpack into others and help other people. Some months ago, I started working with children from my community. I remember when I sprinkled some English in their backpacks. I also gained back more experience in mine. Your backpack is always changing and improving, and it will not dictate your life. You should dictate the way your backpack is changing. There are plenty of examples of people who have succeeded despite their unfavorable backgrounds. And I will give you one example because I like sciences. Michael Faraday, who is, regarding as, who is regarded as one of the greatest physicists of our time, uh, didn't come from a learning-prone household. He actually read the books in the library where he was working as a bookbinder and he didn't have in his own house. Still, despite all of that, he managed to succeed and prove the truth of his own words, but still tries for who knows what is possible. Now, do you remember the three backpacks I was talking about in the beginning? It doesn't matter their shape, size, or quality, but all of them should contain learning. I am truly grateful to be here and to have a chance to talk about this. And I feel blessed. But the people who aren't as fortunate as me, as us, we shouldn't forget about them. Everybody deserves an equi equitable chance to education. And we are here to make that change. We are here to make that difference. Thank you.